So the outline for this presentation, excuse me a second while this pops up. So the outline, firstly, I'm not sure how many of you know about the anterior cruciate ligament. So I'll outline what it does and the consequences and treatment of such injuries. Then I'll outline some of the current research that's happening both here at La Trobe University and in the wider community about anterior cruciate ligament injuries and returning to sport after these injuries and the risks of further injuries to the anterior cruciate ligaments. I'll then briefly outline some of my PhD work about anterior cruciate ligament injuries in the Australian Football League, where we've been doing an audit and compare some of the findings there to uh, other competitions on the world stage. So the anterior cruciate ligament, which I'll refer to from now on as the ACL, it sits in the knee. It's one of the four major ligaments of the knee and basically anterior means at the front, cruciate means it forms a cross shape with the posterior cruciate ligament, but it's also called the crucial ligament because it's so crucial to the stability of the knee. It forms a major role in stabilising the knee, especially in preventing the shin bone from moving forward with respect to the thigh bone. It also prevents excessive rotation movements of the knee. Rupture of the anterior cruciate ligament is a debilitating injury. If you think of the ACL like a rope, if it's put under too much strain, it will snap. These forces commonly affect participants in sporting pursuits. Treatment options vary, depending on what the objectives of people who, are, who sustain these injuries are. Non-operative treatments might be acceptable for those who have got lesser demands on their knees. But for those who are hoping to get back to high demand sporting pursuits, the treatment of, uh, of main is surgical treatment, namely anterior crucial ACL reconstruction. So that involves um, a bit of robbing Peter to pay Paul. Basically what's typically done is that some tissue is taken either from the hamstrings at the back of the leg or from the patella tendon which sits at the front of the knee. Some of that is removed and basically putting drill holes that are placed inside the thigh bone and the shin bone, the femur and the tibia. And this aims to replicate the function and stability of the native ACL. Patients' goals and expectations may vary vastly after ACL reconstruction. Some may be happy just to get back into, into daily activities, whereas others may want to resume high level, even professional levels of sport. Unfortunately, it's not a perfect operation and bad things do happen. Sometimes a graft rupture occurs, which is a dreaded consequence. Another possibility is a further ACL injury to the opposite knee. So some of the trends in ACL research at the moment, what we've been noticing across the world is that there is increasing incidence of ACL reconstruction in younger patients. So that's been reported in various studies. And in New York State, for instance, we've seen a great acceleration in the rate of ACL reconstructions, particularly in those aged 15 to 18 years old. So that graph demonstrates there how those that are 15 to 18 years old have not only uh, undergoing the most ACL reconstructions, but their rate of undergoing ACL reconstructions is also increasing at the greatest rate. So what is a younger patient? Well, definitions vary depending on which study has been performed. We might talk about those who are skeletally immature. That means that their bones have not finished growing and that they have plates at the end of their bones where uh, softer bone or cartilage is maturing into harder bone. If we're performing ACL reconstruction on these younger patients who are not skeletally immature, we often have to change the surgical techniques to prevent damaging these growth plates in the bones. Other definitions include those that might be less than 18 years old or less than 20 year, years old or perhaps even less than 25 years old. Typically these patients are skeletally mature if they've reached that age. We also know that typically younger patients are highly active and after such an ACL injury they want to resume their sport participation after undergoing ACL reconstruction. So they've got high demands and high goals after their surgery. So the first question that has been raised is, does ACL reconstruction allow younger patients to successfully return to sport? And what is the return to sport experience of those younger patients who undergo surgery? If we just look at various studies that have looked at rates of return to sport, so after an ACL injury and subsequent reconstruction, 
do these patients go back to playing the same sport that they did beforehand, or do they go and do something else? Various studies have looked at those that did return and those that didn't, and compared to the age groups of those two groups. So we've seen in various studies um, approaching statistical significance being the differences in ages. So those that do return are approaching a significantly younger age than those that did not return. If you combine those studies in a meta-analysis, you would find statistical significance, indicating that those who are younger return to sport more frequently than those who are older. Also, some individual studies that have looked at younger patients, so a study by Mas Mascarenas and all, 72% of those aged less than 25 years returns to strenuous sport. Whereas if you look at, it, uh, look at their pre-injury level of sport, only 50% returned. Uh, my supervisor, Kate Webster, uh, was the lead author in this study uh, of 561 patients where 88% of those aged less than 20 returned to sport, whereas only 53% of those aged over 20 returned to strenuous sport. And a study up in Sydney found that 88% of those aged less than 18 returned to their pre-injury level sport uh, and 15 years down the track, still two thirds of those were participating in strenuous sports. So that they were the ones who had reconstructions at young ages and they're still performing quite well many years later. So looking at some research again, that's been performed here at La Trobe University, but hasn't yet been published. So the inclusion criteria for this research has been patients that, are, that were less than 20 years old at the time of their ACL reconstruction and they've only had one primary ACL reconstruction. So that means that they didn't have any ACL reconstructions before this particular surgery, and they haven't had any subsequent injuries to either that knee or the opposite knee. And these participants completed a detailed sports participation questionnaire. So the demographics of these patients. So 140 patients completed this questionnaire, mainly males, which fairly represents the way it is here in Melbourne where more males undergo ACL reconstruction than females. The average follow-up for this questionnaire was five years with a range of three to nine years. And the average age at the time of the completing questionnaire was 22 years. Mechanism of injury. So there's various ways that one can injure an anterior cruciate ligament. Um, the majority of the participants in this study injured it through non-contact mechanisms. So they might be twisting, turning type injuries rather than having someone collide into their leg, which would be classified as a direct contact mechanism. In this particular cohort, again, being in Melbourne, a lot of the participants uh, played Australian rules football. There are also fairly substantial numbers of netball players, soccer players, and basketball players. And again, looking at our question about return to the pre-injury level of sport, in this cohort, the overall rate was 76%. But if we look at a few subgroups, male versus female, more males returned compared with the females, 80% compared with 70%. And a lot of these people wouldn't just want to return to play one game of their pre-injury level sport, they'd want to be performing at a good level. So I were asking this questionnaire, did you feel as though you could play as well as you could before your ACL injury? And you'd expect these numbers to be a bit lower, but overall 65% of them rated their performance to be at least as good as it was pre-injury. If we look at those that were continuing to play sport at the end of the questionnaire with the mean follow-up of five years, so some of them might have come back to play sport but subsequently decided to stop. Overall 66%. Again, more males than females uh, continuing to play sport at five years. And if we look at those who regarded their performance as at least as good, 70% of those were still playing, whereas a portion of those that felt that they hadn't regained their performance desired, decided to stop playing sport. So that might be a factor in, in why some people decide to stop playing sport. They're, they might not feel as though they're performing as well as they used to. Reasons for not returning to sport in the first place vary. In the, in the 33 participants in this group that didn't return to sport at all, a fear of re-injury was the most, most commonly cited reason. This is also known as, known as kinesiophobia. Other reasons listed include increasing work or study commitments or physical problems, mainly related to the knee. 
If we look at the reasons for those that discontinued sport, so those that originally came back to sport but decided not to continue any further, again, work or study commitments here was the main reason why they decided not to continue. Physical problems and other injuries were also listed fairly commonly, as well as the fear of new injury, although less commonly than those that didn't return to sport in the first place. So the, the main conclusions from this unpublished data that will be published in the future. So a high percentage of younger patients return to their pre injury level sport after ACL reconstruction. And most are satisfied with their performance and do continue to play, although there is a portion that don't return and don't continue. The second question that we that we'd like to look at here today is another one of the major outcomes after ACL reconstruction, that being a further injury. So we want to know, after ACL reconstruction, how many younger patients do sustain further ACL injury? As a background, just looking overall, not specifically at those that are younger, we know that roughly 5.8 to 7% will sustain a graft rupture to the same knee as they had the ACL injury to. And even more will actually sustain an injury to the opposite knee, somewhere between 8 and 12%. That's been found in a couple of systematic reviews and meta-analyses published in the past five years or so. Looking at some individual studies that have been published, um, the first study is of American footballers who are in the National Collegiate Athletic Association. So they're young, young adults playing American football. 35 of their participants in this study had an ACL injury before they commenced college sports. 40% of those patients went on to sustain at least one further ACL injury during their four to five years in the college system. That's a huge number. We're not finding much smaller numbers in some of the other studies that have been published in the past few years. We're finding 25.4% of those aged less than 25 years are having at least one further ACL injury in one study. And getting up close to 30% in another couple of studies looking at those less than 25 years or less than 20 years. Now, I don't think there's too many other medical interventions out there where if you told someone that you've got about a one in four to one in three chance of sustaining another injury, I don't think you'd be allowed to perform that intervention. But that's the risk that these younger patients are facing when they return to sport after an ACL reconstruction. So we want, look at, we want to look at a bit more detail as to why these younger patients are having these massive rates of re-injury. So another study being performed here by my supervisors, um, we're looking at the inclusion criteria being those that are less than 20 years at the time of ACL reconstruction, and have, again, having had only one ACL reconstruction using the technique where they've taken the hamstrings tendons to, uh, to implant into the knee and the single surgeon. Minimum of three years follow up in this particular study. An exceptional follow up rate here considering that they've got such young patients who are mobile, change addresses, aren't interested in research. 89% follow up rate here. So 200 of these patients are male, 116 female, which again is a fair representation of the demographics that, around Melbourne that undergo ACL reconstruction. Just comparing males and females in this cohort as to what sports they played, you can see that the majority of the males here played Australian rules football, some played soccer, basketball and other sports. In the females, a lot of them sustained their injuries while playing netball. And these rates in this study are fairly similar to those that have been published elsewhere. We see a high re-injury rate in younger people who have undergone ACL reconstruction. Breaking down the participants in this study that were less than 18 years at the time of their ACL reconstruction, compared to those who were 18 to 19 years old, and again breaking into male and females, we see that males who are less than 18 years face a significant risk of further ACL injury after, or of graft rupture. So that's injury to the same knee after an ACL reconstruction. If we're looking at contralateral injury, so that's injury to the opposite knee to which they had the original ACL reconstruction, the rates there aren't too significantly different across the four groups. If we combine those, and noting that some patients would have had both graft ruptures and contralateral ACL injuries, again we're seeing that the young males predominate almost half of them are sustaining a re-injury during the follow-up period after an ACL reconstruction. Again, they're facing significant risks. So overall, graft ruptures, 57 out of the 316 participants sustained a graft rupture at a mean of 1.8 years after their ACL reconstruction. And the majority of these are happening very soon after an ACL reconstruction. 
Our typical advice after ACL reconstruction is don't return to sport within about nine to 12 months after your surgery. But we're seeing a lot of these patients who are young sustain further injury within 12 months. And then another wave um, within the two year mark, it slowly tapers off after that. Again, contralateral injury, so almost the same number of contralateral injuries as graft ruptures in this cohort, but they're happening on average a couple of years later compared with the graft ruptures. And again, 110 out of 130, uh, 316, sorry, over one third sustaining at least one further ACL injury after their reconstruction. So why is this so? Well, a few reasons have been proposed. Greater return to sport rates. So again, the younger athlete has got a greater expectation on their knee and has got higher goals. So they want to return to their sport after an ACL injury. Systematic review and meta-analysis um, published this year has looked at various risk factors and stratified those. So looking again overall, not necessarily in younger patients, they've found a 15% rate of re-injury after ACL reconstruction. So further ACL injury to either knee. Looking at those that return to their pre-injury level of sport, that increases to 20%. Looking at the group that's less than 25 at the time of their ACL injury, that's 21%. And when you combine both of those factors, the young athlete who does decide to return to sport, we see a rate of 25% in this systematic review. We know generally that young men have got risk-taking behaviours and they've got different psychological profiles to perhaps women and slightly older men. So maybe these psychological profiles could explain why they're taking the risks and returning to sport and exposing themselves to the risk of further injury. What can we do about it? Well, it's all well and good to say that there's a problem, but we need to propose some solutions. As I mentioned before, typically we say to athletes returning from ACL reconstruction, don't return to sport in about, for about nine to 12 months. Maybe given that we're seeing so many re-injuries within the first one to two years, we need to say to these young men, hold it off for a couple of years perhaps. It's gonna be very frustrating for them, but perhaps, this can be, perhaps we can look at this as a potential solution to reduce the risk of further injury. That being said, withholding them from returning to sport doesn't really um, reduce the risk of a contralateral injury if we look at the average time uh, post-surgery that those injuries occur. Maybe we need to look at better neuromuscular training. So the ACL is like a rope, but it's also supported by a lot of the muscles around the knees, the hamstrings, the quadriceps, the calf muscles, other, other groups of muscles around there. Maybe we need to be focusing on training those muscles better to provide better dynamic support, support to the anterior cruciate ligament. Maybe we need to form better screening tests. So there've been batteries of tests proposed um, to perform on athletes before they return to sport. They need to be able to hop as, uh, almost as well as they can on their other leg, maybe have strength that's almost equal to their other leg before they return to sport. Maybe we need to be screening before we just give a time frame and saying you can return to sport in nine to 12 months. Might be an unacceptable solution for some, but for some of these athletes, maybe we have to consider changing sports, going from some of the higher risk, twisting, pivoting contact sports down to things that have got less impact, but perhaps give them some sort of um, uh, drive anyway. I'll just talk briefly a bit about my uh, PhD research. So I've, be, I've been performing an audit of anterior cruciate ligament injuries in the Australian Football League. And just in the past few months, we've seen multiple players from finals teams go down with ACL injuries. We know that the Australian Football League uh, exposes athletes to significant risk. The majority of ACL injuries in the AFL tend to be non-contact again, with, sort, uh, with changing direction or landing mechanisms predominating. The incidents where players slide in and wipe out legs, as happened to me, is actually in the minority. But being in contact sport, um, it does expose athletes to risk. The 2013 AFL season was quite significant in, uh, for ACLs. There were 23 ACL reconstructions performed on AFL players. That's more than one per team. That was the greatest number in over a decade. And amongst those 23, there was a disproportionately high number of revision ACL reconstructions. So athletes that had already gone through the rehab and then had a graft rupture. Quite a devastating occurrence for these elite athletes. So the AFL Research Board basically wanted an audit performed in response to these findings and a grant was given to us. If we look at the inclusion criteria for this audit, so we were looking at a 15 year period from 1999 through to the end of 2013. And these athletes must have had an ACL reconstruction during their time on an AFL list during this time frame. Our main aims have been to determine the rate of return to sport 
and further ACL injury after ACL reconstruction. And we wanted to identify factors that were associated with higher rates of return to sport or higher rates of ACL injury. So data collection thus far, the AFL Doctors Association has been very proactive in research. And with ACLs being one of the main injuries that keeps players out for a long time, they kept a registry of all ACL injuries across this time frame. 158 players met the inclusion criteria. We've consulted Champion Data, the official AFL statisticians for playing statistics. And across those 158 players, we've managed to interview 84 of them thus far. Again, being professional sports people, they might not be that willing to talk to a researcher. We've managed to get hold of uh, a bit over half of them. In terms of return to sport, which was the first question asked the data, we're finding that 77% of them overall are returning to play at least one further AFL game after an ACL reconstruction. Almost counterintuitively, those that have got more experience seem to be returning more often than those that don't have experience. I say counterintuitively because the younger patients uh, we've found typically return to sport earlier in the non-elite context, but in the elite context, those with more experience do seem to return more often. So yes, having more than 50 games was a determinant of returning to sport in the AFL. From the interviews, those that did return to sport, one half of them felt that they regained their pre-injury level of form within a season, Whereas a third, which is a fairly substantial number, felt that they never regained their pre-injury level of form after ACL reconstruction. For those that didn't return to sport after ACL reconstruction, they commonly listed list management decisions, such as younger players coming and taking their place, or combinations of multiple physical injuries, whether it be to hamstrings or further leg injuries, as being the reasons why they decided to retire. The second main question, again, was re-injuries and revision ACL reconstruction rates we found here in the AFL were highest with the use of um, synthetic rafts. So there's been a trend in the past six years or so to revisit, instead of robbing part of your own body to reconstruct the ACL, let's put in a bit of nylon or polyester, uh, the, some sort of synthetic substance to replicate the function. Unfortunately, that hasn't seemed to stand up in the AFL population. Eight of 13 who underwent synthetic grafts needed further revision surgery on that knee. So that's significantly higher than the use of either hamstrings, tendon grafts or patella tendon grafts. So although those athletes that do have synthetic grafts seem to return to sport quicker and maybe feel as though they've got fewer side effects in the short term, we're seeing that they're exposing themselves to a significantly greater risk of needing a further revision ACL reconstruction. If we look at a few subgroups here returning to sport, so after a first ACL reconstruction, 67% of those are getting back. Funnily enough, more are getting back after revision ACL reconstruction. Maybe that's because those that weren't going to return to sport have been sort of weeded out, so to speak, with the first batch. Mind you, the numbers seem to make more sense when you look at those that have had a further revision ACL reconstruction, whereas only 38% of those that get back. And also, Contralateral ACL injury seems to be a greater risk to not return to sport than having a revision ACL reconstruction. Only half of those that underwent contralateral ACL reconstruction um, got back to sport. And just comparing this to the world stage, I've performed a systematic review and mirror analysis of elite athletes across the world. Uh, so the primary aim was to determine the rate and return to pre-injury level of sport following ACL reconstruction in elite athletes. And like all systematic reviews, we, we used a very thorough search strategy. So overall, the rate of return to sport in elite athletes across the world is about 83%, which is perhaps slightly higher than what we're finding in the ACL, but not significantly so. That was based on 24 studies across 1,272 elite athletes. And if we break those down into just the football codes, again, we're finding very similar rates. So the AFL is in that ballpark compared to the world stage. So, that's the summary of what the ACL is, what ACL reconstruction aims to do, what we're finding in the younger patients, and what I've been finding so far in the AFL context. Thank you very much. Thanks, Courtney. Any questions for Courtney? Over here. I'm okay. Courtney, the uh, figures from New York with this massive increase mm. in younger surgery. What's it about? Part, part of it might be um, a diagnosis thing. So I suppose in the past, diagnosis of ACL injuries in the younger athlete might have been under-recognised. 
maybe in part though as we're perhaps performing reconstructions on the younger athlete. Um, as I said, well, sometimes we alter our surgical techniques. Um, maybe there's been more of a willingness recently to perform reconstruction on the younger athlete rather than waiting until they're skeletally mature. But I'm not entirely sure of that answer either. Yes? Mm. Yes, there's been research done before that on that, certainly in the AFL context. Uh, there does seem to be perhaps an increased risk once you head further north and there's different sorts of grasses uh, with the summer grasses compared to our winter grasses here in Melbourne. Though in this audit we haven't found anything substantial on that so far. Mm. Multiple studies have reported an increased risk of ACL injuries in females when they're participating in the same sports as males. So if you compare female soccer players and male soccer players, yes, females are probably at a greater risk, anywhere between maybe one and a half up to even up to six or more times the risk. Um, the reasons for this vary. There's biomechanical differences between males and females, different shapes of the pelvis, um, and different angles that they land at. Maybe there's different uh, ways that um, they also compensate when they land. Things like the hormonal cycles have been looked at. I don't think anything's been um, exclusively proven there as to whether things happen at different periods of the menstrual cycle. But yes, females are at a greater risk when participating in the same sports. I think it was really interesting that you mentioned the muscular, the neuromuscular side of things. Um, because, and then you, you mentioned the fact that young men tend to be risk taking, but they're also typically not risk preventers. So, doesn't the fact that a lot of them wouldn't do their rehab in terms of physio, wouldn't that be factoring into their rates of, of lack of success? Yes, undoubtedly. Undoubtedly it would, yes. If they don't go through their rehabilitation training program, that would put them in increased risk. Whether they do it less than females, I'm not sure. But wouldn't that be something that So you're probably looking at a, a reported rate of compliance with rehabilitation. Um, again, it's a good question. I don't know how accurate you'd tell you get young man. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. No doubt.